Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Let's pray and start. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for another time to come together like this. And as we learn, as we listen, uh, open our minds, open our understanding, um, help us to be equipped so that we can serve you and serve people well. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's quickly review what we did um, yesterday, and then we will uh, go forward from there. Uh, so let's just. Um, lesson number three. Uh, we'll start from the top and the beginning faith and science. Uh, just quickly go through. So we said, uh, we asked the question, does science contradict our Christian faith? And we said, no. We can be scientists and we can also be people of faith. Right? You can have faith in God, no problem. Uh, and we saw examples of people in the past. Uh, what about discoveries made in science uh, that cannot be explained by the Bible? That's okay. The Bible is not an encyclopedia, it's not a full thing. So there can be things in science that uh, that is not mentioned in the Bible. That's okay. Uh, should we use science to interpret the Bible? So one is uh, we under we use rules of language to interpret scripture, right? How language is written and meaning and all that. That's fine. But we don't change the Bible to accommodate science. Uh, we don't change the scriptures to accommodate that. And then we asked the question, can science explain everything? And we said there are five basic questions about life, which science does not give us a proper answer. You know, about origin, about identity, about meaning, about morality and destiny. Science doesn't give a clear answer. So science is not going to answer all the questions. Has science done away with God? Uh, said no. Uh, uh, our God is not, you know, a fill in the blanks God. You know, He's God from beginning to end. Right? For us, He's everything. He's not a material God, just to be, make up some imagination. No. Uh, the truth is, while science explains things, it, it can't create, it can't bring into existence. That only God can do. Right? So, science helps us understand things, but it doesn't tell us who brought it in, why it is there, how did it come there, right? So uh, it doesn't do away with God. Uh, is science the only way to truth? We, we went till here yesterday. Uh, we said, uh, actually, there are so many other disciplines, not in addition to science, that we need in, to live, you know. To do to to live life. So so many other disciplines. So uh, just because we have other you know other disciplines, so other disciplines we they do we don't do away with science. We don't say business can explain everything, or uh, accounting can explain everything. No, accounting is there, but it will takes care of certain things. Business is there, it takes care of certain things. Science is there, it takes care of certain things. Okay? Just because there are certain disciplines, we don't say no to other disciplines. There is art. You need art for certain things. Right? So we need all of this together. Right? We, don't, we don't throw away uh, other disciplines just because one seems to be um, you know, very intelligent. All right. So let's go forward, just cover a few more questions. Does science inherently include a leap of faith? That means, you know, scientists say, hey, you people, you people who believe in God, you, you're just having faith. For science, we're explaining everything. You have data. But actually, you don't have data for some of the big things. Example, uh, how did this universe come into existence? There's no data. Nobody was there to collect data when it was happening. <laughs> you don't have data. You can only imagine. Oh, it may have happened like this. 
so many billions of years ago. We have some explain some theory explanation. But you have data? No. Were you there when it happened? No. But you believe it. You have a big leap, a lot of faith to believe something you have not seen. You were never there. You have no data. You're only having some sort of a theory, and yet you believe it. That is of his faith. Same thing about evolution. Was there anybody to actually see it and collect data? No. Anybody recorded? No. We just explained something. Oh, this may have happened, and this could have happened, and this could have happened. Are you able to reproduce it? No. But you believe it. That is faith. Right? That means you're believing something, even though you didn't see it, you didn't collect data on it, nobody else saw it, but you still believe it. So, um, you know, essentially, even in science, when it comes to how this universe came into existence and how life came about, they're also taking a leap of faith. Because they're all. Nobody was there. For us, yeah. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Was I there? I was not there. Did I see it happen? No. But I believe it. But same thing you also. So both are taking a leap of faith. Okay? So science does include, especially in the, in the matters of creation and uh, the existence of life, uh, a leap of faith. So, is belief in God a delusion? That means, are we uh, believing something that's wrong? We're just telling ourselves it's right, right? So, uh, you know, uh, there, there are times when uh, different scientists from both sides, atheists and uh, creationists, or those theists, theists uh, in a debate, and it was kind of interesting, this comment here, Stephen Hawking, he said once, um, there is no heaven or afterlife. That is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. So to which John Lennox responded, atheism is a fairy story for people afraid of the light. Right? So basically, you know, he's saying like, okay, you're just making up a story because you're afraid of the dark. And he said, okay, you made up some theory because you're afraid of the light to face the truth. Yeah. So the thing is this. Uh, by looking at evidence, which we'll see in the next chapter, the only logical conclusion, and a very logical conclusion, is that everything came into existence because there was a great creator who was powerful and was very, you know, who was very intelligent, or not it was, but is very intelligent, to design everything. Okay. So in the next lesson, lesson number four, in talking about creation, yeah. Um, the case for creation. Now we're going to look at it from a scientific perspective. I'm just going to mention the points. Uh, I'm not expecting you to memorize all these details and all that, but just to know that this is how we can respond. Right? And if somebody is interested, they can go and research and they can get go and get more information. Right? But just for us to say, hey, I can I can answer like this, right? at a very basic level. That. By looking at creation, creation is evidence for a creator. Simple logic. Like we said last time, this phone means there is a manufacturer. Somebody, huh? Samsung manufactured it. I can't say it just, just dropped from the sky or after millions of years, billions of years, it came by itself. No, 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 no. So the existence of this phone says there is a manufacturer. Right? So creation is saying there is a creator. So you look at creation closely. Everywhere we look, uh, we see the attributes of God, the power of God, 
the wisdom of God, so on. Okay, so let's look at it. And again, I'm not uh, expecting you to um, learn, memorize all this, but just so that you can talk about this, right? So cosmology, that means, cosmology means how did this universe come into existence? Study of the origin of the universe. So when you say cosmology, like we say theology, theology, study of God, cosmology, study of the universe. How did this universe come into existence? Right. So um, the um, universe had so. In, in, in the days past, you know, in the early days of science, people thought everything was in what we call as a steady state. That means there was no beginning, there was no ending, it just there, in a steady state. So that was the belief, scientific in the science community, that's what they thought. It's all just there. We don't know how it came. No beginning, no ending, it's just there. But then, the concept of infinity is not it's only a concept but the, it is not a reality there's no uh you know that there is you, you just can't have something infinite by itself in existence so einstein came up with this theory when in his theory of relativity he said the universe is not static it's not just in a steady state it's expanding and if the universe is expanding then it had to have a beginning that means from a point, it kept expanding. So it's like that. So he came up with that theory, which means he said, if you go back in time, it will all go back to one point in time. That means the universe had to have a beginning. It was just infinite. It, it was not just existing infinitely it's just with limitless time no the universe had to have a begin and uh, so how do you explain the beginning without god so uh, they came up with this big bang theory that somehow and we don't know how in the beginning when there was a point, there was infinite energy in a single point. And that energy suddenly expanded and energy converted into matter. So that was Einstein's theory. Energy can convert to matter and vice versa. Right? So energy. So at that infinite point, there was so much energy that it just suddenly expanded. And then over time, uh, this energy, you know, matter came into existence. All these stars and, you know, over a process. So that was Big Bang Theory. But some basic questions we have to ask. Okay, if you have that kind of a theory, to the origin of the, you know, I'm making it very simple. I'm not going into all the details, right? Can, first of all, where did so much of energy come from? So much of energy to create this whole big universe. Where did it come from? If you say it was confined to a small point, so much of energy compressed somewhere. Where did it come from? So that itself we have to believe. Energy was there. To then suddenly expand. And then matter came out of that energy. Okay. Simple question. Where did that so much of energy come from? I don't know. We have to assume it, it was there in the beginning. Then that immediately speaks to us about God. Yeah, God. We are not saying God is energy, but we are saying God is the source of something like that. 
God is the source, God is the one who can give limitless power. So, Emily talks to us about God. Then they say, okay, this energy suddenly expanded and this universe came. All right. But if you look at this universe, there is a lot of intelligence. There is so much of it, as we look at you know different things. There's so much of intelligence and design in this universe. So can uh, a big bang, something which you say happened accidentally or unguided, just at random, can a random process bring about so much intelligence? Can an accident result in purpose? Can non-life create life? So energy became matter, but then from matter, how did life come? Can something come from nothing? Can chaos produce order? You know? So basic questions. You know? So we are saying there was so much of energy and that just exploded, expanded very fast and all matter came into existence. Then can a random process create something so intelligent? You know? So basically you say no. Because example we can say, suppose, you know, uh, uh, simple example, you know those uh, uh, children will play play Scrabble. You know they have those small small letters A B C D all the things, and you have to make words. You know? So suppose you have a box of those letters. Let's say you have about two hundred pieces of letters, whatever, and you throw it on the ground. Will it automatically form nice, very intelligent sentences? What? You th how many times you try? It won't happen. Or can a word, you know, we have uh, computers by itself, or you know, I'll just say randomly, randomly you take letters, you throw it, can by itself, can it assemble into a nice cover, chapter, heading, all a very nice book come out of it? You cannot. How many times you try, you throw, it's, it's not going to happen. But you're saying, Energy just expanded randomly, and this powerful and this big universe with the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, everything in place just came into existence. Yeah. So simple example we take, you know, that if you if you throw letters around, you're not going to get even a single. I mean. Word that will come correctly. It's just random, you know. So, uh, so that's the first thing, you know, is that when we talk about the origin of the universe, and okay, you're saying there was a big bang, but that where did that power come from? Where did the energy come from? How can that energy give it automatically give something so orderly? You know, things like that. Questions. Second, there's the evidence from physics. So, uh, in physics, that means physics, we're measuring different things in the universe. What we see is there are constants, certain values that are fixed constants, like there are about 32 some values like that. In, in this universe that we have measure, measured or we are aware of, which are very precise. And if there was any change, it would be disastrous to life. So example, gravity. Right? So there is what we know as the force of gravity that is keeping us all on this planet. We can go up, we'll always come down. It is very precise. It's keeping the earth in its place, etc. But even if that, that force of gravity has to change a little bit, small, by a small fraction, uh, 
everything would just polite. Things will not be in its place. So we are saying there is a force called gravity keeping us all on the planet. If things, if that force was not so precise, life won't exist. And like this, there are other things. Um, uh, we, we say there's a cosmological constant, which is the energy density of empty space. How much energy is there in empty space? You know, the density of energy in empty space. Again, that is like they measured. So very, very precise. And if anything changes there, again, life will not exist. The system will not exist. Solar system will not exist. So there are like this, there are 30 other parameters. It's called the fine tuning of the universe. That means the universe is fine tuned. All these things are exactly at a certain measurement. They don't, they don't change. It is not going up and down today. No, it's just there. The universe is fine tuned. Like you tune your guitar, get beautiful sound. But then bit, guitar will go out of tune. You need to tune it again. <laughs> but this one, the universe is not going out of tune. Staying fine tuned. Precise. Question How did all these things come? How are they staying like that? Precise? Not changing? You know, today gravity is there, tomorrow no gravity, we'll all be floating. <laughs> oh, bye. <laughs> we'll see some other planet. <laughs> no, we're still here. Every morning you wake up, you're still on the earth. You're not gone somewhere. Gravity is still there. So, makes us think, how can this happen by accident? They're just energy came, you know, and uh, universe came. Uh, and then all these fine parameters are so fine tuned that life is possible on earth and you know so, on. so that if you look at it from a, a physics point of view if you look at it from an astronomy point of view again it's kind of related the locations of all the planets so especially earth from the sun location how it's all distributed if the Earth was any closer, life will not exist. It will be too hot. If the Earth was any further from the Sun, too cold. It will freeze. So the Earth is precisely at a location from the Sun that life can happen. Other planets, close to the Sun, too hot. Far from the Sun, too cold. As, a, as we know, no life. They're trying to search for life. Any other planets, anybody else there? Only on this planet, there's life. And the way the Earth rotates on its axis, the way the Earth rotates around, revolves around the Sun. Uh, so when you study astronomy, just looking at one example, like just this solar system, how it is set up. Like, OK. You know, it is amazing. This is not by accident. Sun was there. All these planets are going around the sun. And the Earth is in such a location. It's, it's in that location, not going suddenly close, suddenly far. No, just. And we have life on this planet. And all this started from a big bang. Yeah. So you say, no, there's somebody who thought of all this, you know, who designed everything. Everything was designed and put in place uh, perfectly. And the sun, the size of the sun, how much energy it's giving. It's just right. If the sun was to become a little bit more powerful, we'll all be gone. Or if sun loses its energy, we'll all be gone. But it's just right. So that what comes from the sun, when it reaches the earth, life is going on. So 
in both ways when you look at it say okay somebody thought about this somebody you know this design this is perfect then when you look at biochemistry that means when you study the cell so now we are going into you know uh, we study the human body study other plant cell animal cell and you see how the cell is designed there are millions of cells in the human body, different kinds of cells, doing different things. They are forming organs, forming systems. And this body is functioning. I say it just happened over time. That, I mean, just think about the human body, not, not worry about animals also, or different kinds of animals, plants. Just think human body. And uh, how this functions. And you're saying it just evolved. Uh, so you go back, you say, okay, on the earth there was some uh, carbon molecules, then slowly they all assembled together. And from those carbon molecules, somehow from that pool of molecules came life. Never been able to, from matter, life came. How? I don't know. It came. And then it started evolving, evolving, evolving. We're right? here. So, how can these cells assemble together and create this body? You know, so it is amazing. So, even if you study one single cell and what functions in the cell, one cell, oh, it's amazing. You know, how could this have happened by itself? Because we know normally it doesn't happen. You can keep rice, dal, salt, turmeric powder, chili powder, garam masala, <laughs> keep everything there. It will not become that. It won't come together and become, it will not. It will not happen. By itself. Somebody has to put it together correctly. So we look at the body and how the, even a single cell, and then the so uh, you know how the cell comes together, very complex, very complex. And to say that all this assembled by itself, it's it's uh, you know it's or uh, if you look at biological information, so inside the cell there is the dna and that has information on how the cells are constructed and how uh, this whole body comes together that means in the in the minutest part of the cell there is intelligence and that intelligence is dictating everything else so where did that intelligence come from? Can it, can it just randomly happen the way the DNA is structured and, uh, and, and those protein molecules have come together? Can happen by accident. So no. no so it is design which is speaking to us about a designer. Right? So somebody had to come up with that. Uh, number six, last one is consciousness that means our ability to think our ability to feel believe reason and so both like we said earlier rationality and morality where did that come from if you are saying a big bang happened some many billions of years ago and over time, life evolved on the planet. Where did our ability to think and reason and so rationality and morality, where did that come from? How did that evolve? So, um, again, we all have the same brain. Physically, 
same but each brain is you know we we think different it's it's working differently same brain but it's able to do you know some are very good in this some are very good in that some can speak that language that language so same same physically same but how the each one of us you know whatever we do it's very different and there is this unknown part called the mind you know our emotions yeah there is the, the chemistry there is a chemical part to it but then there's something beyond that beyond the you know the the physical and the chemistry it's beyond the mind the subconscious uh, emotion uh, how does all that work you know, where did all that come from so can it just be matter giving birth, rise to these things you know? no. right. so when we look at and I, we just listed about six of these things that uh, so the Bible tells us the fool has said in his heart there is no God after seeing all this you say there is no God the Bible is calling you a fool <laughs> The Bible says, fool has said in his heart, there is no God. See, you see all these things. Universe. Look at your own body. Look at how everything is. After all this, we can only conclude God created everything. God was a very intelligent God who created everything. Right? So, and uh, the, most, the be most beautiful thing is, this great creator God is a personal God. The Bible is telling us we can know him personally. So he's not like, oh, God created everything. He's so big. He's so far away. I can't understand. I can't talk to him. No, no, no. He's so big. He's so great. He created everything. But he's also personal. That means you can pray to him. You can talk to him. And he will be personal to you. You can experience God personally. So that is so amazing. That God is so big, so powerful, so intelligent, so amazing, and yet He's very personal. I mean, He's like your father, your friend, personal. You know Him. He talks to you. He can. But that is because He's so big. He can talk to each person. Like the Bible says, He counts all the stars by name. Every star He knows. Well, that has to be very, you know, His mind has to. So now he knows every person. Every person. You know, so very personal to you. He's working in your life. So that is the amazing part of what the Bible reveals about this God. Now, the question is, which side do you want to jump? Anyway, you have to make a jump of faith, a leap of faith. Science or God? Both require a leap of faith. What seems more logical? What seems more, uh, you know, uh, realistic? You look at all this, and you look at how this such a great God is also a very personal God. I I feel like jumping this side, not that side. That side you jump, you don't know where Big Bang happened or not. <laughs> Evolution happen or not? There's no evidence, nothing. Very impersonal. It's not answering the questions of life. It's not. Here, this God, this great God, is also willing to be a personal God. You can experience Him personally, but you have to take a leap of faith towards Him. Then you will experience. Right. So which side do you want to jump? Yeah, so, so this way, when we respond to people who ask us about God, about creation, you can answer, you know, very just remember the main points. It's also in the church app. So you can even open the church app and say, wait a minute, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, just simple, like in a very simple way. Think about all these things, and then you decide. Yeah. So you can talk to somebody. If they, if they ask you from a uh, science perspective, 
okay, I'll answer. I remember like about last month or not last month. Uh, this is, so maybe the month before. One man, young man came, he's, he had lots of questions. He doesn't come to APC, I don't know, maybe he said he stopped going to church. Huh? So he had all these questions about science. Okay, come, we'll talk. So he came. So I gave him the same questions, simple. So he thought pastor won't know anything. He said, no, no, I, I know something, I'll tell you. So I gave him the same, same thing. Very simply, I said, hey, look at all this. How will you answer? So he kept quiet. I think about it. So we're not forcing them. You can't uh, force them to believe, but at least you can tell them, see, we are not blind. We also thought through all this. And you think about it. Same things I shared, you know, you think about it. He went. So I don't know what is, this is why I'm not in touch, but so when people come with these questions, we can answer, make them think, and you say, you, you, you go think, I'm not forcing you, but you think about it. Right? Any questions? Go ahead. Any questions from online as well? Uh, I'm not asking you this question as a Christian. Yes. Okay. And I don't want you to answer this question as a pastor also. Yes. Okay. I just want a very neutral view from your side, Pastor. Yeah. Like um, uh, what we personally feel is that, you know, human mind has a lot of complex, complicated questions mm. with all of this. Mm. But uh, don't you think the answer is just has a common denominator and answers are very simple? Yeah, I think because more than being defensive of about our faith and thing, on a neutral point of view, what's your view? First? Yeah, I think if we are, are very objective about it, I would say very logical about it, then just by looking at things around us, we have to ask the question wow, this is amazing, this is very amazing creation. It could not have happened by accident. Who did this? So, so, it's like almost you see a beautiful painting on the wall and some nice painting and say, okay, this is so amazing. Who did it? If you say colors just splashed on the wall and a painting came, uh, I'll say like, what happened to you? <laughs> Simple, very simple, right? Because it is so amazing. Uh, when you look at small things, when you look at big things, it's so amazing that the no, how did this happen? Who did it? Somebody had to do this. We can't even think that this happened by accident. That we won't even go there. But because you know, over time, science has made an attempt. Now it's become so popular. This that view, so we have to now defend against it, and, you know, explain and so on. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, uh, Abhishek's asked. In Genesis one one, as it is written, Lord created the heaven, and the earth, and one two earth was without form. So some believe in the meantime between verse one and two there was a big time gap. Uh, what's your view on this? Okay. So basically, um, Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 2. Yeah, so we'll be addressing that in the next chapter. Right? Uh, when we go and we'll talk about. So um, there is a theory about a pre Adamic world, uh, which some people have proposed. That between Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 2, there must have been a world in existence uh, which is not revealed. And there are one or two scriptures that might indirectly reference that. So now, while I, we are aware of it, we'll, we'll mention that in the next lesson. Uh, just to answer your question now, my response would be one. We cannot state it as a fact. We don't know for sure, even biblically. 
And second, it, it is not something we would preach and teach. Because again, because we are not sure about it, we don't want to pass it on and tell everybody else to believe it. We can't do it. So we just leave it aside, leave it because it's a theory, it's or it's something people think about. We can't necessarily prove it. So uh, we don't know for, about it for a fact. And two, it's not something we would preach and teach. Although I'm aware that in the Christian church, some people uh, talk about it. And even some Bible commentaries, I think Dick's Bible and others have it as you know as one of the ideas there, but we can't necessarily prove it. So we just leave it aside. We know it's there that people talk about it, but uh, we don't preach and teach it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any other questions? So in our next lesson, we'll just introduce it, and then we will continue it next week. We get into this whole, whole aspect of the Genesis account of creation. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. So lesson number 5. Right. Uh, we'll just uh, maybe just get it started. We'll continue it tomorrow, uh, next week. So the Bible gives us an account. Genesis chapter 1. And two. See, this is how everything started. In the beginning, God created the earth. Heavens and the earth, God created. Okay. That means God is the source of everything. God, he started. And then it gives us a little... Now remember, Moses wrote this as revelation God gave him. Moses wrote it. And this is how it happened. The intent is not to give us every detail of everything. The intent is to give us an idea, an overview, like you say, overview. This is how it happened, gender. So people say, hey, where, every detail. But this is how it happened. God created, He spoke, things happened. It took six days. And then, chapter two, He formed man, Garden of Eden, put man there, gave him a responsibility. So not going into all the details, but this is how like, everything started. God created. So obviously there have been lots of questions, lots of explanations on Genesis 1 and 2. And we want to address some of it. So question one, scientifically the earth and the universe have billions of years. How do we respond to that from a biblical perspective? So they say, hey, this universe is 14 billion years old. You're saying six days. Six days <laughs> doesn't match. Created in six days, uh, 6,000 years old. According to the Bible, Earth must be about 6,000 years old. And if you put at the very beginning, Genesis 1 1, then about 6,000 years ago, God created everything. Something started around that time. And he's saying, no, 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 not 6,000. 14 billion years. And then there is dinosaur fossils. How old? 1 million years. That one, some, then someone is checking all this, uh, looking at geology, you know, how those. Rocks have formed over time, or this layer must have take, happened, you know, so many million years ago. This layer, so many million years ago. So, this is so many million years. So, like that. So, Earth is four, Earth is four billion years. Universe, 14 billion years. You're saying Earth is 6,000 years. Big difference. No match, There's not even a close match. How do we explain? So, we are not intimidated by this. Our response is simply this. See, in the creative act of God, energy, time, and design were compressed. It was brought together in an instant. So what, according to our measurement, will be millions or billions of years, God put it in an instant. So it's not a problem. You measure how much you want. You tell what you want. It's okay. 
God put it together in a nest. I have no problems. You you do whatever measure you want. Say how old the earth is. God put it in stone. So if you even think about, and like we mentioned, I think two classes back, when you think about water turning to wine, Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. Then he said, take it and serve. Water became wine. So in the normal natural process to make that wine, it might have taken years. Huh? They would make the grape juice, put it in bags and keep it in the you know cellar and wait for it to ferment. It would take a long time. But it happened in an instant. Instant. So whatever the chemical process, whatever the natural process, which we will measure and say it will take two years to get this kind of wine, or it might take six months, or whatever that was. It happened maybe in one second. So the measure, two years or six months, is not wrong. It is correct. Yeah, in natural, it will take like that. But now God is in the picture. So what would have taken six months or two years, God did in one instant. So you say, no, 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 this wine must have been fermenting for six months. Okay, fine. That is how it will happen naturally. But this time, it's different. It happened in a second. He put water in the jar, he said, take it out. Got it. So, in my mind, it's not a problem. That yeah, now you're measuring and you're saying, this is so many... Millions of years old, whatever, but God compressed everything in a moment of time. So it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So in heaven, there is no time. So heaven is out outside of time. So it's difficult for us in our minds to imagine something that is not dependent on time, where you don't go old, where you don't recognize passage of time. For us, everything is around time. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. Now, how old you are, this, this, time, you know. Everything, our life is revolving around time. Now try to imagine a place where time is not there. That is heaven. That is a spiritual world. It's difficult for us because we are so, we always think in terms of time. But God is ours. That's why He says, I am the great, He, he is the great I am. That means only present. Always. Once we go into that realm, we'll understand you know, how it is. It's a realm without time. Okay, let's pause here. <clears throat> we'll continue lesson five uh, next week. And please feel free to ask all your questions as we uh, go through this. Okay, and take some time to read the notes. And I'm just giving an uh, overview, so read it, understand it. Okay. All right. All right, thank you, everyone. Please take your break and you'll be ready for the next class. Thank you. Bye now.